Hello, in today's video from Rapid TCT Detroit 2022, we're going to be taking a look at Pantheon Design and their HS3 3D printer, and I'll admit I'm a little bit biased towards some fellow Canadians. And also we'll be taking a look at Fabrosonic, who is making metal sandwiches using a process I didn't even know existed. Let's learn something new, and I hope you enjoy the video. So, so we are Pantheon Design, and we make really fast printers. The design philosophy behind our printer was really just speed and reliability at all costs. And it kind of came out of, I guess, just our frustrations with, we've used printers our whole lives. We started as a hardware development firm. And as we got used to repairing those printers, we realized we needed something better, but we couldn't afford it. And we came up with this, the HS3. It's kind of a five times cycle reduction over anything in its price range. And yeah, it prints at 400 millimeters per second. It travels at one meter per second and it accelerates at one G. So it's almost always at top speed. Yeah, and it's looking at it, it's, we have ball screws and servos on all axes, or except for Zed. Zed, you got to step. Except for Zed, yes, sir. So, yeah, we've got our own board to run the clear pass servos, running high lead ball screws. And the real goal there was just never have to maintain. Okay. You know, like ball screws are the best way to position something. And at the high lead we're at, it lets us achieve this. Yeah, you, you have no traditional bearings, you got no belts, no. which means no, with no belts, you got no springiness in the system at all. No springiness so, in the system. This thing should be pretty solid, right? Yes, rock solid. You can, you know, give it a good shake while it's printing. <laughs> We've driven around with it in the truck and it hooked up to a UPS. And it would do nothing because there's no play in the system at all. So there's you... no play. You will notice it vibrates while it's moving, but everything is held in plane to the top plate, even our Z-axis. Okay. So we've got, we are not playing to ground, but we are playing to the bed okay. at all times. So and that's our patented motion frame and that's how we get away with having a printer that moves so quickly, but is just over 100 pounds and two people can carry it around. It is oh, I do love your, how the assembly, wow, that rapid. <laughs> it, it's just a solid plate and you just drilled holes in it, reamed holes for everything yeah. to mount to it. Yeah, long-term goal is to have the whole motion assembly basically be done on an even larger gantry machine that can pick and place everything okay. with magnets and vacuums and have a screw gun that can just come and... Just get it done in one off and then put just, a box on it. I think like 80 or 90 percent of the fasteners come in straight in from the top yeah so it's very it's very it's a very clean machine like it, it that's why we built the the ones that we're shipping to customers right now don't have the clear panels but we put the clear panels on for the show and now i think we might just do clear panels on all of them oh, all just index everything off of this point so everything is if you look at all the oh yeah you got pins and alignment pins oh fastened to the the shrink we were talking about with the motion system design it shrinks the top plate by yeah yeah because you know. yeah, this is what what is that three quarter or 20 mil yeah 19 mil and it's so, it is steel or aluminum it's aluminum aluminum we we built a steel one and like it is in theory better but it's not better it's a, the, not to justify the out. weighing like 400 pounds yeah. or whatever it's diminishing returns at that point. Now, looking at the tool head, it looks like we got it, what, a slice mosquito magnum or some sort of derivative of a slice? Yes, we used a slice mosquito magnum and we loved it. We thought it was one of the best hot ends on the market for sure. And we knew we had to work with them. So we joint yeah. developed this hot end with slice. We've added more heat. We're running 100 watts of heat over there, 50. Okay. Is that just a single cartridge in there? or dual dual? cartridge. So you got a dual cartridge, okay. Dual cartridge. And then we've also incorporated into the extruder a nozzle touch sensor. So okay. we're bonking the nozzle off the bed to sense the first layer height, which means you could change a nozzle or you could change an entire print head and you just run the next print, right? It's, you're not doing Z height adjustments for a different nozzle. Oh, and this is running, this is just running RepRap firmware with a Duet, right? This is running RepRap off of the Duet, yes. But with some custom stuff for the servos, obviously. Yes, with okay. some custom stuff for the servos. Okay. Uh, just because the step direction sends from the Duet. Okay. Not, uh, not what we yeah, because you, you're, I've never played with servos before in a printer, so different drivers and it's completely. Yes, yes okay. And yeah, we're printing a CF Pet G filament. It's our own blend. Yeah, this one here. And we kind of find it's just good enough for everything. Like it's the price points on, the price points low enough 
that you can do prototyping with it, but the strength is there for end use production. A lot of our customers are printing stuff that they're sending directly to clients. They, a lot of times people buy this printer with the intention of prototyping, and then they end up doing full-scale production with Because speaking of production, we have some stuff on the table here. Yes, so... So this was all being printed yesterday. I saw this all being printed yes, yesterday. So we started this bed yesterday morning, and it's about a 24-hour print. Okay. You're looking at... If you're not too intricate with your designs, you're looking at about a kilo every 12 hours. Okay. Um, and when you have more outer walls, obviously a little slower. This yes. is kind of the print from hell if you look at the supports. Oh, oh yeah, these are all on. I'm trying not to knock them off the bed there. Yeah, 100%. We can glue <laughs> it back down if we have to. But yeah, this was uh, really about as tough as it gets for a print. And then we have some movie props down here that were... From our earlier conversations, these were actually, you guys made props for some movies here and shows. Yes, so we worked on The Atom Project with Netflix. We worked on Peacemaker. Uh, so we did all the helmets that you see in Peacemaker were printed on our machines and then sanded and chromed out of country, I think. Yeah, we can print a full helmet overnight. It's insane. And this is all CFP TG, obviously. CFP TG. It's uh, the only filament we make right now is the CFP TG. And we're moving to a CF. We're going to produce a CF nylon next. There's okay. demand for high temp. But we really like the engineering resins. Okay. We are sticking with that for now. We're in an open materials library. If you do find, hey, I need to print a lime green PLA. Okay, so your machine's not tied down to any RFID chipped or anything. You can use whatever filament you want on these machines. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you run into the scenario, you need to print something else. You, you can go, go ahead for it. And develop a print profile for it. We're using Crucia Slicer. Okay. So if you want to develop that, that is nice to see that um, an upper tier commercial machine is using open source options and you're not being tied down to an ecosystem yes so that i do like seeing that on these types of machines yeah we like to make recommendations for the best filament to use but we don't like to tell you what to do it's good to see cool yeah. thank you thank you what we're doing is instead of taking like a powder and melting it or taking a wire and melting it is we're taking a thin foil of metal okay and we're welding those together with ultrasonic welding which happens at essentially okay, room so temperature you, okay so you're layering layer and layer and then yep. you go through and just we roll over it with an ultrasonic tool so okay. this is actually our welding device it it rolls over that material okay and as it's rolling over it's actually welding it it's a true metallurgical bond okay so what it's doing is it it's kind of scrubbing back and forth on the order of microns very yep. small but that friction grinds off the oxide layer inherent on a metal surface. You have virgin metal on virgin metal and you get yep. a solid state bond. And then, okay, so when you're done, how do you get your part out? So all of our systems are CNC mills to which we add this welding technique. Okay. So all of our geometry is gonna be derived from milling. So we print in you know units that are close to the shape that we want, near net shape, and then we use the CNC mill to get the exact shape. Okay. Including like internal features. Like this guy right here is, is a heat exchanger. Um, all made out of foil. Okay. You can see these channels here. The inside of that channel it's was hollow. milled. Oh. So we printed to the top, we milled the channel, and then we continued to weld over top of the channel to lock that all in. Oh, because I was going to say, what is the advantage of doing this versus just taking a block of aluminum yeah. and milling? So you basically can do half of it, machine it, and then just put the other half on. Yeah. Oh, wow. The other kind of cool things that we can do, like in this part, you can see we've, we've welded aluminum and copper. Because we're not melting, we can mix pretty much any metals together. So titanium to copper, steel to nickel. Um, let me grab a couple. So I'm assuming, uh, does that mean like so heat sinks? Would that be a common oh, yeah, application? Yeah, do it all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, like, because using that would be, you can get like at the contact point, you use like the really copper. expensive stuff. Yeah. And then you can just transition it to the, and it's a ball. Oh, wow. Exactly. <laughs> ah. This is uh, stainless and aluminum, just to give you an idea. You can mix metals. Here's to your point, this is copper and aluminum. You know, copper right at this. And it's bonded, it ain't going it's anywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's truly metallurgically bonded. That is that is clever actually. The last thing that we can do that's kind of cool is we can embed electronics. So because we're not melting, we can stop and drop in an electronic circuit, an electronic sensor. So thermistors, inductive, whatever. Whatever. Uh, Load cells. Accelerometers, name it. Yeah. We've embedded it. Yeah, because you're not welding that metal back. Well, you, you're well, you welding, are, you're but it's not hot. You're yeah. not hot welding, yeah. So you can bury your sensors where they're safe, and you can get data out of that forever. So like, 
airplane wings. You can yeah, instrument it's, an airplane in the metal. Wing. You know exactly how much strain it had every flight. Um, so you know exactly how much damage was done every flight. That is actually pretty clever. Oh, we also do active elements like this part over here has a servo motor built into it. So this is actually a pretty uh, cool. Yeah. This is actually an injector for a rocket motor. Okay. We have um, fuel and oxidizer. And this is a throttle bay fuel injector. Most most rockets are kind of on or off. So we embedded a servo motor in here. This is a cutaway, but then we can adjust it adjust on the, the fly. Oh, sure. on, on the fly. That's okay. brilliant. So how, how big capability do you have with this? Our uh, largest system we have in-house is right there, a six foot by six foot bed. Okay. I was in injection molding for years, and yeah. that was one of the things that I was starting to see before I got out was yeah. the uh, formal well, like lifter, like lifter heads and oh, whatnot. Sure. With like you would have internal yeah. water circuits that you would never be able to machine. Could get to. So is it yeah. circular in here? Yeah. Like so, I got a cross like, section of that. <laughs> like here's the. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, it's oh, well, it's almost it's circular. Yeah, a little flat in there. But. So this is a this is a different cross section we use okay. a lot. So um, how we, often we would you like? Like theoretically, you could do a layer machine, a layer machine. Could, if you really, it would take forever. Yeah. So um, you you mill as little as possible. Yeah, because that's going to be the longest, longest off. I'm assuming. Yeah. That is. So I'd say most parts we mill four or five times. For and the you whole can part. And you, you can't even tell that it's layered. No, no. And we've been qualified for space flight. We have parts on satellites. We have parts on oh, nuclear reactors. It's it's real. No, I'm telling you, you have parts on Mars too. We almost have parts on Mars. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's close. Close. You, so you didn't throw it hard enough. <laughs> so it got approved for flight too late, so it didn't actually make it on. Oh, this no. Part, this part it was fully qualified for, oh. for flight on the oh. Mars rover, but the testing got done too late. That's... We passed all the tests like three weeks too late. Next time. Next, Next time. time. That is not so. How thin is the uh, foil you're using? It depends, it depends on, on the application. I mean, we, five to ten foul usually. Okay. That's the, the normal range. We can go thicker, we can go thinner, but that's that's the normal range. That is nuts. I didn't even know you could do this kind of stuff. Yeah, something different. Like I, I was used to like I've, I've seen the other where it's like powder, powder or or, it, or it's a yeah. it's a welder on a like yeah, or a tool header yeah. or whatever. And then I can uh, I can offer you some uh, some free literature that comes with layered gum. I, <laughs> <laughs> That's clever. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks for stopping. Have a good day.